Hello, and welcome to this DISC communication debrief. In this section, we're going to explore your unique DISC communication style. And it's important because we know that top performers virtually always, always have effective communication skills. Think about this. If the world's very best solutions were not effectively communicated to other people, that great idea, that great solution, would become just another one that the world never really embraced. Communication is so important. This debrief is going to focus on effective communications, how they happen, and the essential role that they play in overall top performance. Top performance is not a single measure. It begins with how your decisions or solutions that are impassioned by your hierarchy of motivators is then delivered to other people. It's the delivery truck that transports your motivated decisions to other people. Here we're going to explore your behaviors or your communication style and how it can work for you and how sometimes it can work against you as you seek to connect with people who may have a different communication style than you do. If you view your pages 4 and 5, you'll see that there are two full pages that describe your unique combination of disk communication style in some detail. So you can stop this tutorial, spend a few minutes with this. These pages are typically 90% reliable, 90% accurate, describing your communication style. The point is there are four very different styles that follow the DISC format. That is, there is the dominant style that measures how assertive you are. Some people are very assertive, others are very meek and mild. How the I factor measures how influential or extroverted you are. Again, highly extroverted people are very outgoing and people oriented. Other people are very reserved and introverted. They'd rather not be in the spotlight. The S factor measures how steady or patient you are. It scores the degree of urgency or the pace that you like to operate in. Some people are steady as she goes. Other people are very urgent and needs to get things done immediately. And finally, the C factor measures comprehensiveness. It is a measure of how detail-oriented, how accurate, precise, and organized your communications are going to be. It's important to remember that everyone has some degree of all four of these factors. Now, they can combine in an unlimited number of ways, which is why we're all a little bit different, by the way. But the important thing is to know what is your style, what is the style of your boss, and the key people that you work with on a regular basis. That will open the door to improving the lines of communication. If you look at your page six, it's going to give you a very important piece of this overall communication strategy. This will show you how to connect with others in a more effective way, and specifically, it will show others the most effective way to connect with you. Now, communication is very much like a dance. That is, it requires two people to be on the same wavelength, to be dancing the same steps so that nobody gets their feet stepped upon. One of the most powerful contributions is this understanding that communication is a two-way street. But in that two-way street, there are four very different communication styles that sometimes struggle to connect with one another. Each style has a certain set of tactics that will resonate with it and a certain set of tactics that will not resonate with it. Now, at the bottom of your page six of your report, it's a very important component of this overall interaction between individuals. This deals with you. You'll see that the top half of this uh, page talks about 
communication strategies when communicating with me do these things. The bottom half of this section is when you're trying to communicate with me, don't do these things. So this is very important. So we want you to stop for a moment. Take a look at this. The top half of this section lists seven tactics or strategies that are effective with you, that you appreciate others using. And what we'd like you to do is to mark three of them that really step out. Now, they will be likely different than what you're looking at here. This is just a sample. But the ones that are in your report are specifically tied to you. So you first want to mark the three that really resonate with you. And then you're going to make a circle around the one of those three that is most important for other people to know about you. Now, the bottom half of this page represents the other side of that issue. These are ineffective strategies. So if you insert the word don't in front of those seven statements, again, select three and then circle the one of those three that would be most important for other people to know to avoid with you. Now, just think about this. Would you like to know the do's and don'ts for your boss? Would you like to know the do's and don'ts for the key people that you work with on a regular basis? I suspect you would. Now, page seven shows you your overall DISC scores with two sets of graphs that give you the same information but displayed in a different way. The top half shows you the individual four-factor graphs. The graph on the right is your natural style. This is your baseline graph. This is the who you really are. The graph on the left is your adapted style. The adaptive style represents how you believe you need to adjust your natural style in the workplace. So you look at this individual, and again, these are not your scores. They represent uh, scores from this uh, sample report. On a scale of 0 to 100, this person's D factor or dominance is pretty high at 73. The extroversion is extremely high at 88. And you see over here that any score that's greater than 80 represents a very strong display. So if you were around this person, they would seem very outgoing, friendly, uh, and gregarious to you. They would also, because they have this low C factor here, they would seem to be, you see, less than 25. They would seem to be not very detail-oriented. So this is what you want to begin to understand, that these four graphs show you how this person's going to connect. So this individual is going to connect in a very outgoing and friendly way that's got some dominance behind it, but the extroversion is going to kind of put some sugar on that dominance, they're not going to deal with a lot of details, and they have a moderate amount of patience. So this gives you an indication at a glance as to how this person is going to behave. Again, the D is the dominance, the I the influence or extroversion, the S steadiness or patience, and the C represents the comprehensiveness, detail, organization, uh, precision, etc. Now, on page 7 continued, you'll see that the same information that we just looked at, that is, these four scores, the D, the I, the S, and the C, are presented on this page as a single mark. Now, the dot represents the natural style. The star represents the adapted style. In the corner of each wheel is one of the four factors. You remember that this person's highest score was their extroversion, which is why they plot in this lower right-hand extroverted quadrant. If their C score was the highest, they'd be over here. D would be here and S would be here. What you want to know is where do you plot on this wheel with your natural style? This wheel makes it really easy because you can plot an entire team on this wheel. You can plot you and your boss, you and your specific work group on this wheel, and at a glance, you can see where everybody's behavioral style is going to be.
Remember, there are four very different styles. So which quadrant do you plot in? Where's your boss plot? And what about the key people that you work with on a regular basis? These are just a few of the insights available to you from this Executive Summary Developmental Report. And again, you can start and stop this uh, debrief and review it at your uh, pace. Now, I want to give you some additional information about communication and behavioral styles. Each one of these four factors, whether you're primarily dominant, extroverted, patient, or precise, or com uh, comprehensive, you're going to have two key elements. One deals with directness. Are you going to be direct or are you going to be indirect? Are you going to be open or are you going to be guarded? Now you'll see that in each quadrant there are these two elements that work together. The first one is directness, either direct or indirect. The second one is openness, either being open or guarded. This is really important to help you to recognize the other styles. First, we look at directness. Directness has to do with the amount of energy, the amount of power, and the desire to control the conversation that you will display as you communicate and connect with other people. Those who plot anywhere on the right-hand side of the wheel are going to be direct. doesn't matter where you plot, you're going to be direct. They have a faster pace, they have more energy, they have more drive, more juice. Here's some examples of uh, specific behaviors that you're going to see in direct people. As you look at these, you'll recognize people that you work with who exhibit some of these factors. Also, if you plot on the left side of the wheel, you're going to be indirect. Now these people are slower paced. That doesn't mean slower thinking. That doesn't mean slower effectiveness. It just means they have a slower pace. They're more patient. They're more reserved. They're very cooperative. And again, if you look at these behavioral characteristics, you'll recognize some people that you work with that exhibit these factors. That's half of it, directness. Everyone is either going to be direct or indirect, right side of the wheel, left side of the wheel. Now there's a second part of this and that deals with openness. Now openness has to do with the intention of your communication. Directness has to do with the power of your communication. The openness or the guarded has to do with the intention of your communication. If you are guarded that is plotting above the equator, either direct and guarded or indirect and guarded. The guarded part tells you that this person is task oriented. It's all about business. If you plot below the equator, you're going to be open. And the focus is on building a bridge to other people. So those who plot down here are wanting to connect with you on a personal level. They want to know about you. They want to know about your family. They want to know how you like your car. Where did you get those shoes? They want to connect with you at a heart-to-heart -heart level. Sometimes we say that guarded people want to connect with you at the brain level, where open people want to connect with you at the heart level. The point is that every style will have an element of openness and an element of directness. Once you understand that, your ability to connect with them will improve considerably. So what is your style? That's where you want to start. Because this is how you seek to connect, share, deliver, and communicate your ideas with other people. Are you direct or indirect? Are you open or guarded? Everyone on the planet plots somewhere on this wheel. Each quadrant has an element of openness and a directness. Right side of the wheel, going to be direct. Left side, indirect. The top half is going to be guarded. The bottom half will be open.
So in summary of the communication style, remember that top performers are always effective communicators. Remember that the golden rule, that is trying to connect with everyone else based upon your particular style, is not the most effective way to do it. There is an element that's called the platinum rule, which says once you know where the other person plots and you know whether they're open or guarded, direct or indirect, you can then communicate with them based upon that particular style rather than your style. Doing so, subordinating your own preferences, will enable you to win the battle and the war. And finally, when you look at this wheel, remember everyone on the planet plots here somewhere, only 11% of the general population plots here in the high D category. Now if they try to connect with everyone else using this golden rule, you'll see that 89% of the rest of the world will find this direct and guarded style to be less than ideal for them. 38% plot down here. This is the largest percentage. Then we have 27% here and 24% here. Now you'll see that no matter where you plot on the wheel, there's more people who are different than you than are like you. So if you want to be a top performer, learning to recognize these other styles and then connecting with that other person based upon that style will improve your lines of communication dramatically and move you with a big step down the road towards top performance. Now this is then the next step is available for you here where we're going to be exploring the internal motivators that measure why you do what you do. The communication piece shows us how you deliver your motivated decisions to other people. So you can click on any of these links or you can click on the home page link and go back to the very beginning, start and stop as you like. So I hope you will find this valuable. When you're ready, click on the motivator link and continue the process. Thanks for visiting.